Good afternoon, traders, and welcome to an, an incredible edition of AwesomeCallsTrading.com. Well, today's four-letter word is F V R R. And before I begin, FVRR was very special. It was very special. It was presented in the chat room by a, a, a two traders, JT and James. Uh, I want to get his name correct in here because I do want to give him credit. James Gardino. And these two gentlemen uh, brought uh, FVRR to my attention yesterday. And today, um, it was on my radar. Now, what makes FVRR so special? Well, what makes it so special is one. Um, and why did it do what it did today? And why was the conviction that the stock was going to roar today? First of all, I have been day trading, as you know, almost 16 years. We are going almost seven years in this chat room. And I built my reputation studying IPOs. And and when I mean studying them, I mean study. I mean that's what I that's that's and I studied them. And what I mean by that is you have to understand what underwriters are on board, who's backing the deal. Um, pricing is everything. Prior to pricing, if they up the price, that's what they and they and they and it's bought out quickly. That's called oversubscribed. When you have an IPO that's also oversubscribed, write that down. I'm giving you little tidbits why this stock ran. And then if you have a small float, so you combine small float, tier one under underwriters like a Goldman. Well, let's take Goldman out of it. All right, let's this Goldman's a great big company. We know it. But Goldman does IPOs lately a little bit greedy. I mean, case in point, Lyft. Uh, and all these others that they have to be on. I mean, where the stocks just blow up out of the gate and then either sink or they, they open up double what they priced at. So let's leave Goldman out of it. But if you got a B of A, a JP Morgan, a Citibank, okay, just to name those three or four, um, you know, and like I said, JP Morgan behind it, I mean, they're a little bit more softer. Tighter, it's a little bit tighter how they open, and they're very much more a little bit more conservative in a sense that they, it's more controlled IPO. But if you can bind a great company, a great company that has a future, that is profitable, add the fact you got a tier one underwriters, add the fact you have it oversubscribed, add the fact that you're a low float. Okay. Now, FVRR had all of that, but FVRR could have blown, blown it away. You know, when Lyft came out, remember when Lyft came out, how I said, don't buy that crap at 87? Remember Lyft? You see what happened? You see what happened with Lyft? 88 to 47. And I kept calling $35 on it. Remember that? Remember I called that? And the reason why was because they priced it, I believe, in the 60s and opened up at the 80s. And it, that's ridiculous. You don't want to do that. That takes away from retail retail trading it. You can't trade that retail unless you just short the stock. There's not there's no there's no there's no upside for us as traders on a retail when you open up like that. But if you take a a low floater. Now listen to me very carefully because I'm going to teach you the secret sauce of IPOs. And you um, you uh, chat rooms that are sitting in here right now that are all over the world that come in here to get lessons, you know, you know how much, you know, I have to tell you, just fuck off. But if you're going to write it down, at least write it down the way I write it, okay, so you can sound important to your members. But the key thing Especially when you have a low float. What's a low float? Seven million, eight million, and under. Maybe ten. Over ten, I start to get a little bit. That's a mid-sized float. Seven, eight. But when you have a five and a four, and you have a J.P. Morgan behind it, 
typically those are reserved for bios but this company here let me tell you something now the last key that you need there's two essentials you got the low float right you got the under items right okay the open okay write that down chat rooms write it down because you're going to need to know this this is really important so you could sound so important on the next ipo okay the open is the key forget what this did today i know you can't but imagine buying 5,000 shares and writing it out to 35 you would have made 40 50 grand today on just this call alone but think for a second the key is the open all right you need that open and what's the key if you have a 5 million float right and you open up with almost 2 million shares there is no other place that stock can go but up do you understand that you have all those things behind you but then when you open if this had opened with a hundred thousand shares it probably would have tanked hit 22 23 maybe hit the 21 area bottom curled slow move to the upside but when you open up with at least 30 35 percent of the float this is what happens bam you just fly and from the moment this opened I said buy the stock buy the stock buy the stock when it broke out here at 25 26 I said buy the stock the stock is going to third once I saw this breakout honestly I saw 35 see the 28 when I saw it break out over that 28 I said it's a 35 I immediately went to Twitter and informed all of you this is a $35 stock now we were already playing at three dollars before two and a half but on Twitter, this is where I like to showcase the town, who we are, and why we're so different, and the conviction. All right now, at this point, the float's pretty much done. Now you have a new set price for the stock, twenty-eight. Now you have a whole new float. Now you're going to rotate another five million shares, right? So here's here's it rotating, rotating, about right here at thirty-one. It filled another five million all right so now you go to another level right and see how the levels kept coming up if you look at all of these all of this volume here you're just you're just floating up to another level the floats being rotated at different price levels so different buyers are coming in but the key to this IPO is the open it means nothing here this would never have gotten here if it wasn't for the way it opened the opening is the key to it if this had opened up for a million it would probably have settled at 30 34 but by opening up with 2 million on 5 million is almost 40 percent of the float it's already been taken these people are super rich today super rich any 50 any allocation traders are super rich today and you wonder why people buy 40 million dollar homes it's shit like this that make them millionaires it's an IPO like this that puts billions of dollars in the market cap as day traders these are game changers they're not life changers life changers are trades like drives okay but game changers for for you this is what it is FBRR is a game changer. This is when you could buy a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand shares and just let the thing rip. Put it to bed. Go to sleep. Right? And um, and it was thick. The spreads tightened up within five to ten cent ranges. I mean, this is a well done IPO for retail. Fuck the insiders. Fuck them. I don't care how much this guy's gonna make right I care about open it up and I can trade it that's what a day trader well not all day traders are awesome calls trading I'm sorry let's face it <laughs> nobody does this shit but us and that's cool it's a compliment to what we do I was reading tweets from different rooms today like there's nothing to trade today I'm going back to bed and 99% of the chat rooms out there don't trade IPOs this is not what they do because they don't understand them and here this is again part of the process of becoming great this is why you could take any awesome calls chat room 
member that's been here six months a year, and they can actually run your room. Seriously. They, they would run circles around you because they would know how to trade IPOs and BIOS and what to look for, what underwriters. They could run circles around <laughs> teaching. Do you know what the underwriter was? Uh, did you know the float? Did you see the rotation? Did it open up? I mean, they would run circles around. But in here, you know, they, they just, they're, they're a part of a family. This is our family. And this was just an absolute beautiful, retail, well done, well executed IPO. This is what we all wish for in IPOs. Okay? And I, I just can't stress it enough, the value of this lesson today. Because Lyft really, even unless you're a short seller, could get shorts, Lyft was just an absolutely clunker. Now, can FYRI do a beyond? And fly from the opening at 45 to 186. You know what? Anything is possible. But for me as a day trader, I think we've exhausted the stock. Um, I mean, but what I will give you is um, there's a stock called, this is, I'm giving you a little freebie. It's called UPWK. Um, I would be considering swinging this. Um, uh, for a $17 move. The reason is, is this is its competitor. And today it got a nice lift off the bottom because um, you can see how it moved up today. I think over time this would, because uh, this has now become a cheaper stock and yet they're competing with FVRR. Okay. So that is the IPO FVRR. And I hope you really got the lessons of that. Um, again, it comes down to the underwriters the float, how it opens, how it prices. Now, here's another thing. If this had opened at 40, now imagine for a second, they got greedy and Goldman was aboard. Oh, boy. Now Goldman comes in and goes, fuck that, JP, B of A. We're going to go, we're going to open at 40. Then you probably would have got about, about maybe to 45 and then pulled. Okay, you see my point? But because they kept it low, they allowed retail to actually become part of a stock. And that's why it did so well. That's why it did so well. And I want to give a shout out to one special individual in our room. His name is Alex. Um, we all know him. Alex uh, suffered uh, a loss. And I think he's showing it here. Uh, let me see if I can get it. Uh, here's his uh, FBRR 3919 still pending. He sold. I think right here is, I don't know what this is, additional. Uh, just closed additional. Okay, yeah, that's what he did for some reason. Now, Alex um, already had made $4,800, and now he made another $1,600. Um, Alex took a loss on big. As you know, and I respect Alex tremendously. He's been he's an annual subscriber. I love Alex. And not so long ago, about a week ago, he took um, a hit on big. And we spoke about it. Uh, we talked about it. And I think then the next day, yeah, here it is right here, 58.33. And we emailed each other. And we actually got closer together. The loss was Goose. Goose? Is that what it is? Yeah, it was Goose. I thought it was big. I apologize. He's in the room, so he's listening. Um, I made I made a. I made a, It really wasn't the greatest call. Okay, it wasn't one of my terrific moments. But um, and he believed in me, and the stock ended up just kept, kept coming down, and so he took a loss, and it was very painful. He wrote to me. He expressed his upsetness at the same token. We both learned from it, and it, you know it's part of the business, unfortunately. And um, from that day forward, as you can see, his feed and I love his feed. He rebuilt. See, he started making money. He started slow again, one seventy four, then three forty four, then five hundred, then fifteen fifty two. Do you see that? Do you see that every day? He just because I believe in Alex. But more importantly, Alex believes in Alex. Alex is not going to let this 
Yeah, did he take a day off or two to get over it? Probably threw some rocks in a pond, right? It is what it is. You're not going to be perfect. Remember I discussed that in the webinars? All right? I'm not perfect. You're not going to be perfect. But God damn it, if you're not 85, 90% a day, I'll fucking take that all day. Well, these 85 and 90% days, boom, 174, 344, 516. All right, 1552, right? Look at all that. Look at all that. Every day making money. Yesterday he made 324, or, or what was it? He made money on that one, 300. And then today he made 629 this morning. You see how he's overcome over two or 3,000 right there? And then bam, $4,800. Alex is back. He's happy. He's, you see? The journey of a trader. Let this be a lesson to you. Whatever you're going through in other rooms outside of awesome calls, even if you're going through it in here, I'm right there. I'm right there. I'm not going to leave you. Okay? I want you to be successful because you can do this. Alex is living proof that you don't give up. Okay? This is a journey. It's like a journal. He's telling you his story. And this is a great story. And then on top of the $4,800 he already did for the day, he, he made another, what, $1,600 right there. You know, the loss now is a memory, a learning memory. That's what it's like being in a right room. All right? We did a few more. Um, we're going to go over Restoration Hardware and Lululemon. Okay. Now, these, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. You just had to be here. I actually think, I believe, what's, it, uh, what's that great guy? Palmer actually recorded the morning session. Yeah. It'd be really interesting how he edits it. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. These two were absolutely beautiful trades today. I was short biased on these two. There was no ands, ifs, or buts. I was short biased. Restoration hardware had just absolutely blowout numbers. I mean, just get out of its way. It was a train. I mean, just forget it. It's over. I mean, they just blew it out of the park. Lulu, it did all right. They did all right. You know, they, I'm not I'm not overly impressed. So Lula, I was really short bias, but I wanted to pop out of the gate, and then I wanted to lean into it short. And I I called for the Lululemon to balance base around 175. I gave the value of the stock because it had closed the day before at 170, 171. I figured it, I didn't think it would fill the full gap, but I did feel very confident it would hold a 175 level, and that's what I called today. So I wanted everyone to short the stock, add on any pop out of the gate, and short it to 175. Restoration hardware, and if you don't believe me, just flip over to our morning notes, which are right here, that were written down way before the opening bell. And I said it right there. This stock will pull back to 175. Lulu uh, Restoration hardware, I said, I am still waiting. I wanted 107 on it. I told everyone, start shorting the stock, let it push at the open to 123 if it comes, scale in, you're going to get 10 points to the downside, which is what, 113? So you're going to make 10 points on this trade. I've already, I made that decision, okay? I've already made that decision. You're going to get 10 points. All you got to do is trust me. The stock is going to come down. Yes, it's not going to gap fill. Get that out of your mind, okay? So don't even think that. But yes, yes, it was going to come down 10 points. And so I had everyone on board to short Restoration Hardware in our great chat room. Okay. And ding, 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 ding. Pop on the open on Restoration Hardware. It hit just under 122 right there. And ding, 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 ding. Uh, Lulu hit just under 183. And guess where it pulled to? 175 it, it really based at 175 for a while and then it finally broke the base and came down and just simply gap filled and restoration hardware i don't think it's done yet 
I still think over the next few days, well, we will see 108 and 107. I really will be surprised if we do that and bottom curl it. The reason why I felt very strongly restoration, there are numbers were really, and what I do in Awesome Calls Trading for the great subscribers, I read the reports. And what I do is I become an analyst. Remember I talk about that all the time? You become an analyst. So I gave the, I gave restoration a new value. I felt the value of restoration should be about 108 to 110. I pretend like I'm a Goldman Sachs analyst. The value of the stock, based on the earnings report, based on the EPS, what I read, this is a value of 108, 110. I give it, and um, and that's where I think the stock will settle. And that's that's the value I gave restoration hardware today. I figured Lulu would just simply kind of cut close to its gap. You know, and it did. And actually, if you look, it'll probably end up just filling its full gap by the end of the day. So really two really great quality calls, uh, to say the least. I was really impressed with these two. Uh, the next two that I did um, out of the gate was Revlon, uh, uh, Rev, Revolve, and Crowd. These were really, really nice trades today. Um, I had these on my radar. And the reason is, is because the market was really green. They were both gapping up. See the previous closes? They were, and this is really important for all you traders in the chat room. Really just listen to this for a second because you really need to understand what is it that I saw and why I said to go long. Okay, so this morning, um, and I want you to look at just the first few minutes, which are really essential to, because if you're a part time trader and you have limited time, all right, your time is very limited, so you have to make that money quick so you can go to work. All right, if you're a, a trader that only can trade a couple hours before going to school, or you have to get on base because you're in the army or in the in the uh, military or whatever, you, your time is limited. So when you're in here, I have to make every moment count. And these two trades were just dying, dying to break out today. And how do I know that? How do I know that? Well, if Revolve, uh, Rev, Revolve is closing at 38, and then in pre-market, it's gapped up to 39.30, that's telling me the stock wants to play today. It's like, it's like you know, it's like, your, it's like your beautiful dog comes over to you and brings you a toy and says, here, play with me, play with me, play with me, right? Right? Well, that's what Re Revolve did. It, it, it wanted to play today. So I said, okay. I'll tell you what, I think you'll probably go back to 39, no matter what it dips to, and I'll probably, you could probably get back to 39 to 40. So I'm going to call along at the open, all right, and on any pullback, I wanted 37.30 to long it, it hit 37.50, and then I said it will go to 39 to 40. And you could see what just in the first few minutes, bam, 40 it hit. Crowd, on the other hand, okay, now crowd, opened up yesterday and usually on these really nice high profile IPOs that really do well and it did well yesterday look you know it came it opened up and then it sold off at the end of the day but look at the gap up look at the gap up you see how it closed at 58 and opened at 61 at two three o'clock in the morning that told me right there this is in play they want to run this why why AJ why how the fuck do you know? Why? Because I've been doing this for so long. It's like repetitious. I see the chart pattern. I recognize it. I immediately know it's a breakout trade today. So what do I do? I'm like you. I'm watching. I'm looking at this at sixty dollars, close to fifty eight. And you know what I'm doing? I'm actually writing on my notes. This is going to sixty five at the open, probably even more. Long the open, long pre market. Just take the fucking thing long. You don't believe me? Look at my notes. Think maybe next time I need to write that. Take the fucking thing long. Look, crowd. It's going to pop it open at 65 or more. It's right there. I drew it out for you. I said, even if it pulls to 59, add. This has room to 70 today. Look at that. Fucking spelled it out. It's like building a puzzle in a room and it's only two pieces. All you got to do is connect it. Right? You don't believe the other one? Look at Revolve. This is going to 39.40, right? 37.35 long it, right there. Again, I didn't say, oh, this is going to get Phil. This is going to get Phil. This is going to get Phil. Did I say that? <laughs> I said this is going to 
Now imagine you being in the room with 100 shares. Just 100 shares. Bam. $200. You're done. Go back to bed. All right? You ready for crowd? Bam. Look at that. Look at the timeline. 10 minutes. Didn't I tell you it was going to go to 65 at the open? Here's the open. Imagine you had 200 shares. Boom, 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 boom. How, how do you lose? How do you fucking lose? You can't. The only way you can lose on trades like this is that, one, you ignore them. Two, you, you have your charts upside down. If your monitor is upside down, turn it the right way. Okay? Turn it the right way. Just Because whatever you're doing, do opposite. Why would you want to short that? What told you to short that stock? I don't see anything that said short it. Okay. So that was a really nice one. I am going to give you one more. And then I'll call it a day. Coda. What? The fuck is that? And Tyson Foods. What is, what is Coda? <laughs> okay. First of all, Remember there's that, that saying, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. You know? You ever get a slow driver that's that's driving like 30 miles an hour on the freeway? And they have their whole lane to themselves. But they get in your lane, and you're going 45, 50. And they move into your lane. And you're like, what the fuck? And then their lane is empty. And then you have to move. You have to move. And you think to yourself... What was wrong with your lane? Why are you in my lane? Okay? That's Tyson Foods today. Now, Tyson, they came out and just, come on, grow up. Uh, you want to hear the headline for Tyson gapping up from 82 to 86? You want to hear it? As part of efforts to expand, to, to expand its protein offerings, Tyson Foods introduced the company's first plant-based and blended products. Oh, my God. Why don't you just put, I want to be beyond? Why don't you just fucking say that? Can I be beyond? All right. Tyson Foods has been around for a long time. It's like a cornerstone of Wall Street. All right. You can't play the game. So the PR people of Tyson were playing the game. They fucked up. It's a short. Gap fill it back to 82. Have a nice day. All right? If it pulls at the open at 82, you can long it for a quick pop, pop. Outside of that, it's an $82 stock. You can't. You're not beyond. Stay in your lane. Here's the trade. Bam. Have a nice day. Four points. Go back to bed. Oh, if it hits 82.50 or four, or something, go long and pop it. Bam. Here's 84. Have a nice day. Two up and then fade it right back to 82. I mean, come on. You could have done that in your sleep. You don't even need a pro. Coda? Coda was really nice. I made money on Coda. This was my baby. This is my, mine, 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 mine. I made $800 on Coda. I love Coda. Earnings were good. And it was gapping up. It wasn't going to fill the gap at all today. I said to the traders, if this hits 11, 11.50, go long the stock. So any pull at the open, let it come down. I believe I put 11.50. I don't know. Uh, Coda. It was my number. Uh, I was under my notables right here. Coda. Uh, yeah, 11. I said it short at 11.80 and then pull it to 11. Um, if it breaks 11, um, it should give us up to that 12 to 13. And so uh, Tyson is the world's second largest processor market chicken. Exactly. No, exactly. But just their PR group was just like, what are you doing? Well, maybe we could throw in, we're going to do what Beyond's doing and see if we can get like $20 to our market cap. It doesn't, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> well, Wall Street saw right through that. So anyway, I figured watch the 11. If it breaks through 1180, the stock should roar. And it was just a beautiful trade today. And it almost hit 15. See the bottom curl? Just kind of see that 1180 spot. You know, I wanted it uh, pre-market. I was uh, looking at traders. Look, watch probably pull back. If it hits 1180. If it snaps it, we can see it gap fill. If it doesn't, it has room to 1213. 
the 1180 was the key to snap and it just it really wouldn't break it and that's really where I, I identified it and I chased it right here I actually I went in with decent size and it pulled on me and I was down 400 460 dollars I was so oh I was so angry but I really felt it was gonna pop and it popped right here and I sold right in here uh, for a really nice profit and uh, I was really proud of myself because you know I gave a little bit of patience and I, once I saw it get over here and get ready to break through the flag I knew I was gonna get paid so I just waited and I had a market order ready and it ripped it right through and sold it in this 98,000 batch I was so happy this trade really made me happy today I was smiling from that point on and that was it so I hope you enjoyed today's webinar I hope you got educated uh, so VFVRR, Art Restoration Hardware, Lulu, Revolve, Crowd, Tyson, Kodak. Really a wonderful day to trade today in the room. And, you know, if you're in a room that's just lacking the exposure of what the market and the opportunities, it, it's time to go. It's time to, to join us and be a part of us because between myself and these great mods in here, the, the Fires, the Dark Side, Jani, uh, Raphael, Dave the Trader, and Palmer, you know, B trades. It's such a wonderful group to trade with. I am so happy every day going to work. I love going to work. I love it when I make about eight hundred, a thousand dollars a day. But I love it even more being a part of this group and teaching people. And today was just. I mean, how do you get better tomorrow? But guess what? Tomorrow we're going to even be better than we are today. We don't stop. And just remember, in closing, when you're down, you're not down. It's a hiccup. That's all it is. All right. Remember the journey of Alex. Give him credit. Remember the journey. All right. He's right here. He's telling you. Two weeks ago, I was down on a loss. I talked it over the weekend. It was a reset weekend. Since then, I've made it all back, and he's up 3,300. Seriously, this would not have been possible without AJ. Oh, I love you, Alex. I love you. And what, what do you say to that? You just say, I appreciate you. Appreciate you so much, so much, Alex. You are truly inspiring, not only to me, but to many others. And let's give him, we have to give him the Leo toast because that's, actually we should give him the bow. I like the Leo toast though because it's like, you know what? You deserve it. Where are, where's my where's my Leo toast? Leo, 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 Leo. A B C D E F G H I J K L. I always got to figure out how to spell it. It's kind of crazy, huh? L. You know what? I think it's over here. There it is. There we go. And that will conclude our webinar for today. Have a great day. God bless all of you. I will see you tomorrow. Bye bye.